Hi, Dr. Janine Marie here, and we are going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, but before I get to that, you can visit my blog at lifelessonsbyjanineMarie.com, or you can also visit my website at janinemarie.com and see all of the lovely things that I'm doing and the things that I write about and some of my transition. We're going to continue on my segment of Universal Law, the Law of Attraction, and the area of manifestation. And this is the most exciting part to me. This video is about love and desire, and it goes with focus. So when you focus your thoughts, your words, and bring that all together with love and desire, you create this magic. It's like an absolute miracle. And you know, first, of course, if you've watched any of my videos previously, and if not, please go back and look at the playlist and see if, you know, some of the things that I suggest. If you write down three things that you really feel that are defined, that you want in your life and you desire in your life, and then take the one that you've written about the most. That's the one that you're really excited about, the one that you have pages and pages of information about. And that's the one maybe focus on. And these are just suggestions because your life path is your own. So maybe focus on that one thing. And when you get to that one thing, your thoughts have created. Let your words create, like in my previous video. Keep your focus on that creation in any way that you possibly can. Vision boards, thoughts, meditation, hypnosis, Whatever it is, it might be an internal thing you want to change, and that might take hypnosis. It might take I am statements. It might take, you know, powerful words that come from you to counteract maybe some of the things you've heard about yourself or thought about yourself over the years. Maybe it's a healing journey. Maybe you want to, to create a lifestyle change or a job change or do, job, excuse me, description. Or maybe it is an actual material thing, and that's totally okay. This is your life path. It belongs to you. You are not a small being. You're a large being. We are not beings that contain a spirit, and this is how much space we take according to our pounds and height and weight and, and whatever. We are spiritual beings that are big and our body is contained in that spirit and we manifest through how we tap into the universal forces that God gives to us, the power that he gives to us. And I say he in that persona because I'm gonna get just a little bit biblical in a minute, but God has no gender. It's very descriptive even in the Bible that God is spirit. And that means we have been made in the image of God, that is the spiritual image of a God who is a powerful creator. Image does not mean our face or facial features in our body, obviously not because we're so diverse as people. So our image that is displayed, that is in the image of God is God's powerful, focused and loving and adorable. And I think that is the best description that I can come up with because when I meditate, I just see this um, vision of all the things that I adore. God brings these adorable things to me. And yes, some difficult things that I need to change, but I think God is just adorable, that's my thing. So I wanna get back to the book of Genesis and talk about some of the features of when God created the universe. One is that he saw that it was void. He actually focused on it and he saw that it was void. And isn't that how we feel inside when we're going through a transition or we're really craving something new? Usually we've gone through a great deal of loss, sometimes trauma, and sometimes we're just at a standstill and we feel like our life is going nowhere and we know that we know that we know that there has to be a transition and if we don't express it if we don't come to that point of creation and expressing we become depressed suppressed we become oppressed 
and we become subject to other people's ideas and thoughts for us. And they don't live our lives for us. They might live around us and us around them, but they don't live our lives for us. You create for yourself, no matter how close you might be to others. You have a very personal purpose and journey and destiny, and it's for you to determine what that is. And out of the void that you feel, you're either going to stay in that standstill and be miserable or come to a place of creation like it speaks about in the book of Genesis. God saw that it was void. He was looking at the earth. He was like, oh, wow, there's nothing there. It is absolutely a blank slate. And that's what you can be right now today. And he saw that it was void and he started to create. There were things thoughts and that creative process and he spoke what he saw into existence. There was a focus, there was a thought process, there was a spoken word. And with everything that God created, you know that he loved it because his very first expression when he took a look back and he saw it, he's like, okay, is this the way I want it? Is this what I really have in my thought process? Is this what's going on? And he saw it and he named it. He said, it's good. It's good. It's just so good. And you just know when you say it in that way that God loved what he created. God loved humanity. And once again, I'm putting in that he persona. I'm sorry, but it's, you know what? Old habits die hard. So, um, what, I, what I want to get to here is the process of love and desire. Have you ever reached a point where you've met someone and you feel like you're just so in love with that person? The person's adorable to you. You just think that that person is just, you know, the, the world just revolves around that person. The sun rises and sets with that human being. You are absolutely infatuated and in love, and we call it head over heels. And sometimes it feels a little topsy-turvy, but you know, when you've got that feeling, the whole universe can be exploding around you, and you don't really, really think about it. It doesn't matter. It's like problems seem so much easier. And it's like nothing really feels like a problem, does it? It feels so easy. Life looks easy. It looks like we're, it's, it's the experience is like we're looking through these rose colored glasses and all we can see is this love that we feel and this desire that's pulling us. And that's focus. That's what love, real true love and desire does, is it spins focus so um, up close and personal that we don't notice the other things that are going on around us. There might be some negative, really difficult things going on around us. There might be some very difficult problems going around, around us, but we don't sense it because there's a desire there's a love. And at that moment, that love is much more important than anything else. And that's your creator expressing through you. God expresses through us as people. If we let our ego step out of the way, God's expression is so beautiful. Let's take a look at the Song of Solomon and you can turn to it if you want to and I'm not going to read from it. I'm just going to talk about this beautiful love affair. King Solomon was absolutely in love with this woman, and the woman was in love with him. It's Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon. So if you want to look that up, you can and read the whole scenario. But what happens um, as, uh, I guess, a reflection of that love is... They describe each other in ways in their time. And even some of it in our time is just extremely beautiful. It's like every part of that human being was absolutely dynamically wonderful and beautiful. 
King Solomon expresses to his bride, my woman, my wife, everything to me. This is how beautiful you are. And she comes back and talks to him about how she feels about him and describes to him, this is what, this is what you are to me. This, I look at you and you're, you're everything. And, and that's how it feels. And at some point towards the end of the book, not quite, but there's a description of love and it talks about some jealousy because love has a little bit of a form of jealousy to it. Not, um, we're not talking about the bad green eyed monster kind of jealousy. We're talking about a jealousy that says you're mine. God has that type of jealousy for us. You are mine. And this is what King Solomon and his beautiful bride were displaying for us in this book written down this story for us to read and, and come to understand about love. And it's a reflection of God's love for all of us, Creator's love for all of us. You're beautiful. Look how I've made you so intimately lovely. But later after the scripture on jealousy, there's a, a line, and I'm not going to say it verbatim because I'm, once again, I'm not reading it. And it talks about the nature of love. It says, love is as strong and powerful as the very fire of Jehovah. And once again, I'm paraphrasing, but I just got chills because it's like, it depicts a love that's burning, a desire that's really burning. And it's just so ingrained inside an unconditional love, the love that comes from Jehovah is speaking of God. It's an unconditional love that is beyond what anybody can even really personally describe. So this is love and desire. This is what God desires for you is to create as you are in the image of God. And I'm kind of stumbling over that. I want, I'm ahead of myself. And so I'm trying to get to that point. God sees you in that beautiful creative image. You can come into that beautiful creative process through meditation, through identifying what you really desire in your life or what you want to really change. You can do it through hypnosis, through I am statements, focus, but that love and that desire needs to be felt in your heart space and all over your body. So I'd like you to try a visualization, if you will, when you go into meditation and maybe one of my videos will just do this actually physically, if you're having trouble with it, go into a meditation and really think about what you really have identified. This is what I'm going to create. This is where I have a place of service. This is what I'm going to give to the, the earth. This is a gift. You are a gift. So a place of service is wonderful. But whatever it is, material, whatever it is, a relationship, maybe it's that relationship you want to draw to yourself, but you want to draw it in a way where it's healthy. Um, we have a dysfunctional world. We really do. And we display that through dysfunctional families over and over and over again in order to show us that our humanity is in of itself a family and dysfunctional. And so the more functional we make it, the more we come to an understanding of how we can do that and display that to the world through service, through the gift of who we are, the more we lift everyone else up as well. So think of yourself as that big. You can do some heavy lifting if you really, really desire to, but you can display how wonderful your God and creator is through anything you want to manifest in your life. Maybe you want to learn to crochet. Maybe you want to learn to play badminton. I don't know, whatever it is you've um, determined for yourself, but really cultivate that inside, visualize it. Visualization is amazing. It's thought and it makes it bigger and focus on it because what you focus on becomes your truth, your reality, and it lets everything else drop away because that's not what you're manifesting right now. 
It's this particular thing. It's this particular focus. This is what you want to change. This is what you want to bring. This is what you want to do. Plain and simple. And then let it grow in love and do it over and over again until you feel that sense of love all over you and through you and you will begin to see it outside of you. You'll know it, you'll feel it, you'll taste it, you will seek it. Even with Adam and Eve, God prophesied after the, the supposed fall, okay, they made a boo-boo. Afterwards, he told Eve, your desire will be for your husband. He told Adam, this is how you're going to support Eve. This is what you'll do. And this, it, it wasn't so much punishment or discipline, but it's a gift of love. Discipline is always a gift of love. So discipline yourself. Discipline yourself is this is the way it's going to be. My desire is going to be for this. And identify that over and over again. Look for the synchronicities and let go. Let go, because trust is something, and this is something you can cultivate inside of yourself if you're having trouble with trusting yourself with what you manifested in the past or what you wanna manifest, focus on trust first, but learn to trust what your creator gave to you. Learn to trust how you use it. And when you make a mistake, just understand that it's just a mistake and in the movies, when they're doing a mistake, it means you're just going to do it over. You can do it over. I want to do over today. Plan B. Put that into plan A now. <laughs> you're amazing. Know that. Feel that. And I just want to sow that into your life. This is what I see you as. This is my place of service at this very moment. I see you as big, as dynamic, as amazing. And I think that you can do anything when you really come to understand just exactly how God creates through you. Above all else, create love, unconditional love, and then go out and lift humanity with every particle of love that you can muster. God bless you. I hope that this was really helpful for you. If not, if you really need something else, you can always give me a call at 832-484-8306. We'll go on to the next video and maybe I'll do a little bit more about desire. Maybe we'll do a meditation to cultivate your desire. How about that? There's some other things I have coming up. Some more universal law, some more other stuff that you might be interested in. And if you have some su suggestions, excuse me, please feel free to send me a message or a note or comment below this video and let me know what you wanna hear about and I'll focus on that for you because I love this place of service and I love you, I really do. I may not know you, but you're a part of me and I'm a part of you, and I don't want to feel divided and separate. I want to feel connected. God bless you. I'm loving you from here. I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. If it's the weekend for you, have a wonderful weekend.